Hi, how's it going? So today I'm filming my daughter's fifth grade science curriculum. The first thing, the first part of this video will be our chemistry uh, unit study. And then the second part of the video will be what I started uh, using for science in the beginning of the fifth grade year, which was August 1st. And I'm filming this video in September. I've already changed. But in case um, you clicked on this video because you're just interested in the chemistry, I'm going to go into that first because that's what we're currently planning to do. And then at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you the resources that I decided not to use because they weren't working for us for fifth grade. And I'll talk a little bit more about that, about the changes to our science curriculum. But first, let me get started. Um, okay, so this is kind of a haul and um, a, a unit in itself because I just got these items in the mail and we haven't uh, used them yet. When I do my mid-year curriculum update, I'm gonna talk about and share with you guys how these items are working. But for now, this is like my only choice because I don't wanna buy anything else for fifth grade. So we're just going with this chemistry unit and I'm gonna talk about that. This is the main book that I bought for our chemistry unit. This is Chemistry for Curious Kids. So, I'll, okay, I'll talk about, I'll, let me, I'll just go into that at the end of the video, but let me just show the stuff. So this is, um, yeah, so this is like what I would call our spine for the chemistry unit. This is really, I really love this book. You know, we haven't, I haven't used it yet, but so far from what I see, this is the table of contents. And so it has like six chapters, but a lot of the chapters have quite a bit of information in them. States of matter, atoms, solid, li liquids, gallet, oh, sorry, solids, liquids, gases, melting point, boiling point, periodic table, um, in the lab, chemicals around us, like air, seawater, so lots of different topics. So yeah, so I do like the illustrations and I like how it has like a lot of information and it presents it in a very engaging way. So I'm gonna talk about at the end of the video why I chose to focus on chemistry versus doing kind of a general science. So I think what we're gonna do, um, another change to my sci our science curriculum is we were only doing science one day a week. That was just some idea I came up with for the beginning of fifth grade and that's not working. So I decided to go back to do history two days a week and science two days a week. So what I think we're gonna do is, so the first day that we do science, we're gonna read, read a few pages in this book. And then the second day that we do science, I'm gonna show you guys, we're gonna do the supplemental materials. So that way we can get a little bit of this book read every week. So yeah, so this is our first book um, for the chemistry unit, which is our spine. Okay, so the next thing is just um, this, I just got this um, grid notebook that I've been having. I plan to have her do some drawings from that book and from some of these other books. And um, it could have been on any type of paper, it could have been blank, but I'm just, just gonna go with the grid because I already own it. So we're gonna see how that's gonna go, but that's kinda gonna be her main interactive thing as far as like writing component to go with the science because we're not doing any more workbooks for the chemistry. Okay, so this book, you guys have maybe already seen it in a past video, but we've been having it. This is Us Born Lift the Flack, Flap Periodic Table. So this book is pretty short. It has a lot in it because of the flaps, but it only has, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Say like, like, okay, so it says 16 pages. But yeah, so this will be one of those books that we do on the second day of science. So this will be just one of those books that she'll have on the second day of science that she can just explore. And it'll also um, connect with that main spine book. So we haven't actually used this book yet in the curriculum. I actually put it in her STEAM unit for fifth grade, but I'm just pulling it from her STEAM unit and putting it in our chemistry. Okay, so this is a brand new book that my daughter picked out. I had her pick some new books that were inspired by chemistry. And this is Element in the Room. I've been having my eye on this book for years. I've been having it on my wish list. I'm so glad that we found it. It's beautiful. I love black with the different colors. So this book is similar to, you know, the other periodic table, but it's just a different way to present the information, which I love having a variety of sources. 
So yeah, so let's see. So it's like investigating the atomic ingredients that make up your home. And it has like these like investigation type things. It's like your mission, the case of the elusive elements. And it, and it presents itself like he's like Sherlock Holmes, a play on Sherlock Holmes, the super scientific detective. Join me on a curious chemical search, a search for the elusive elements. So it sounds like it might have like little activity kind of things too. It's like the first mystery, the Big Bang. And so it has like all these different little things, the case of the disappearing sun. It kind of like, I find it's very engaging. Um, the periodic table. So it just has like, so I thought we could do like a two page spread on that second day. Here's hydrogen, so beautiful. I really find this very engaging. It looks very interesting. So yeah, so this will be one of, I, I should say, our second main book. So it's like three main books total with, you know, the first one being the spine. So yeah, so I'm really happy to get that one for her. And then the other two items are like interactive type of items. So let me show you guys the first thing, which I didn't open yet. But it is a chemistry kit. It is Discover the World of Chemistry. This is the, I'll link everything also in the description. This is um, like one of the like entry level ones. It says age 10 plus. They had some uh, way more like detailed ones, but I just wanted to get kind of like a simple one. Yeah, so it's like, has like different things that you can do, you know, um, with an introductory chemistry set. And it has 28 experiments. And I'll talk about this set later after she does it in like our mid-year review. We will see how we like it. And then she also picked the next thing, which definitely I will give her um, the opportunity to do this on that second day of science. And this is old, I think it's like Old Nobby. This is the brand Old Nobby Molecular Kit. It's like Old Nobby Molecular Kit. This is a 239 piece. I, we picked one of the smaller ones just to see. So I know nothing about chemistry. Like I, I actually never took chemistry in high school or in college. I just took like biology and like physical sciences and things like that. So I am like very, I like, I don't know anything about chemistry, but she picked this cause it looked really engaging, you know, because you get to put together these little, um, you know, models, whatever. Let's see. So I was actually, I, I kind of opened, I opened it when we got it. I was hoping it would have a little bit more of these examples, but so it comes with this chemistry stencil and then it has all the little parts. And this is what she saw on the image on Amazon where you could put together these little, you know, these little parts. And of course, she loves building things, so it definitely looked like something she was interested in. Hopefully, I'll be able to. We'll be able to tie it in um, based on my understanding of it, which is I'm gonna have my husband probably help her because he took chemistry and things like that. So he he'll probably like help her with this. But um, so I was hoping it would come with more examples, and maybe like this set is just too limited. I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to read more about it, but. Um, yeah, so it has like different ones you could make. I thought it would have more uh, these molecular models. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So far, I think there's seven on here. And I look to see, I'm gonna go on their website. I don't know anything about these little things, but Whatever it is, like, my daughter will definitely get something out of it. You know, she'll learn a little bit of something, and my husband will be able to help her more. Like, I'm pretty ignorant when it comes to chemistry, so, but I thought these looked very engaging, and we will see. But, yeah, so that is our chemistry unit for fifth grade, and now I'm going to talk about why we're switching to our chemistry unit, which is, like, a very, very, very introduction to chemistry based on my knowledge and based on these books. So these three items are what I, I started the fifth grade um, 
curriculum, science curriculum with. And okay, let me talk about, so let me, let me show you guys. So this is what my plan was. My plan was to use this book, Everything You Need to Ace Science in One Big Fat Notebook for fifth grade. And I was going to use, we were planning to use this as a supplement, which is Evan Moore Skill Sharpener Science. And then this was just an additional book that I bought to like kind of reference. Now, I do really love this book. And I think that I do, it's, I do like these items, but they just weren't working for us. Something about this book just wasn't working for us. I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna also tie this back into chemistry in a second, you guys. So, okay, so something about this book, I got the history one and the science one. Now the history one's working great. I'll probably do a video on the history separate, of course. But the history, the same exact book is working great for us. But this book for science was just not working for us. I don't know what it is. But um, the chapters are a little bit longer than I originally had planned. So it was kind of hard. Some of some aren't. So like the first chapter is very short. My goal was to read a chapter each each science each day that we had science, and then it has these little like question and answer, little questions and answers on the end of each chapter. So like this chapter is kind of long. So it has the check your knowledge, on at the end of each chapter. So we would we we read through these together. And then, I don't know, I'm very bad at explaining why something doesn't work for me sometimes and her for our homeschool, other than to say that it just doesn't because I can only guess. I felt it was a little bit too dry for us for science. Now, I could see someone really, really, really loving this book. I could see a child probably doing this on their own and maybe loving it. I didn't, I don't, I really don't. Since I'm doing science with her, I have one homeschooler and we do a lot of subjects together. There are some subjects she does do she does do on her own, you know, like her mental health unit she does on her own and like reading and things like that, certain reading, but we do science together, we do history together orally. This book just wasn't working for us orally and that's what I was looking for. So that's why I'm trying to say I think it's a very good book and I'm going to keep it. You know, it might be something we go back to later. Also, it seems like every time we would get to the end of the check your knowledge, we both of us didn't remember half the answers. Like sometimes we would get almost all of them right. It was just not engaging us. So we were just like forgetting what we were reading, even when we would do the whole chapter in one day. And it just didn't like wrap up for me like I thought it would. And that's OK. I got this book very inexpensively, I think at like a thrift store. Also, it wasn't like a really expensive book and I just wasn't really that committed to it. I still think it's a really great book, but I just wanted to try something new. Also, my reason for picking this book was I wanted us to just have a general knowledge of the whole, um, all of the fields of science because it's like everything you need to know about science. And that was something else that I felt maybe why it wasn't working for us because I think for us, for science, we prefer units. And that's kind of why I'm tying this into the chemistry in the same video because, so th this, even though the un they have like units on different topics, something just wasn't flowing for me with knowing we were just like all over the place the entire year. Because I started reading more about middle school science standards and high school sci science standards for our, like I looked at our school district, I, like I live in Austin, Texas, but so I looked at like our counties, like Travis County. And like, so say hypothetically, if she were to go to school, I looked at like what they were teaching. Now middle grade's kind of different, but I, 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 I focused on high school and I learned that because I don't really remember, like I remember a little bit from high school, but not much. So anyway, so I looked at high school standards and I realized that it's, it's like, required because I want her to go to college so it's like I wanted to see what they're teaching it's like they focus on chemistry biology and physics which is our school districts from what I read so basically you have to take biology to graduate high school in my district but then like the chemistry and the physics are kind of like a little bit more open like you have more choices but it was mainly those three now I'm not saying like everybody's schools are different you know 
she may go to high school, she may not. I'm not sure yet, probably not, but I wanted to set her up for high school. And we really never did anything about chem. We, ne we never really did any learning about chemistry, any learning about physics. So even though I'm like, I don't have a history, I mean, sorry, a chemistry background, like I'm probably a very poor um, example for teaching chemistry, but the books will guide us. And this is like, like I said, it's like a very small introduction to chemistry. So this, again, was more of a broad science. This is skill sharpener science. So we started this book. Uh, you could see that I had matched it to the chapters in here and I was like very excited but then something about the fact of, that we were jumping around in this book was making me it was just like off-putting for me because of course they don't match and that's what they're not supposed to match of course but like I was trying to match them together so then I was like okay this book isn't working let's just go to this book so then we tried to we started to do this by itself where we just started from page one I actually already erased what she wrote because I'm gonna just probably sell this back to like half price books um I'm gonna make a review video of actually all of my Evan Moore workbooks before I sell some of them back then to show you guys what what's working what's not because I bought a lot of Evan Moore for fifth grade this workbook I think is really nice for someone who their children connect with it. It's not that she wasn't connecting with it, but it had my same issue that the first book had. I just felt like I wanted her to focus on one branch of science for fifth grade because going forward for middle school and high school, that is what it's gonna be. So this book, um, also I didn't really connect with some of the activities because I just felt like like this one's is like you need two potted plants and then petroleum jelly. This one's like you need um, a bean sprout plant. I just didn't feel like we're not like project heavy homeschoolers. I think this book is engaging, but it just it just wasn't for us. And you don't have to do the activities, you know, like this one's like a greenhouse effect. I mean, come on. I mean, for me, like I'm OK. It's like you need two aquariums or any large glass containers. Okay, obviously you can skip this, but we, I am definitely not going out and buying that. And I, we do not have anything like that. Again, I felt like this was like way too complicated for us. Like maybe this would be something you could do if you're like a school, you know, maybe people in school use this. Um, and I didn't buy it for the activities. I mainly bought it just for the vocabulary practice definitions, like the questions and answers, but I don't know it just wasn't working for us and I still think it's great but it just wasn't okay and then the third book that I bought which was supposed to be just like a reference I do like this book it just didn't have enough information in it in my opinion to be like a spine even though I think it could be but it's just mammoth science by David McAuley he writes he does so many nice books uh, science-based architectural different things I, I do love these, but for me, this was more of a book. It, it turned out, oh, I still got the little page marker. It turned out to be more of a book that I felt like, A, we're going to continue to use as a reference. It's going to still be on our fifth grade shelf, science shelf, you know, little bookshelf, whatever. But I also feel like it might be a nice book that I might put in my daughter's STEAM unit, and she can just kind of read it during her STEAM. It's kind of... The illustrations are very whimsical. That's why I picked it because she, my daughter was obsessed with like prehistoric animals and dinosaurs for years. And I like how it has like the mammoth as like, you know, a lot of his books do as his main little, you know, like character. And, but I just felt like it just wasn't enough for me to use just this book because I told you I didn't like the other. Yeah, just like, so yeah, so I love this book. We're going to keep it. I'm not selling this one or anything to Half Price Books. I think it's really cute. But it just wasn't what I was looking for again because I wanted to go back to focusing on a unit or one type of science. So um, these three books, like I said, just weren't flowing for us. But I think they'd be there. I still think they're really wonderful. That's why I'm showing them. If I hate if I if I thought they were horrible books, I just would not show you. I'd just be like, OK, I'm just going to put these aside and I'll just talk about why I didn't like whatever we were using but yeah I like them but just not this year not this for us okay 
So um, I think I've pretty much talked enough just to tie back real quick, quickly about chemistry again. So yeah, so this uh, chemistry, going forward for fifth grade, I'm considering our science a chemistry unit. I will also find videos on YouTube and things like that of chemistry things or whatever, uh, things that they talk about in those books. So the lab kit will be something that she'll probably do on her own or with her dad. Um, but it still be will connect it still be like connected learning but we're not going to probably do it during the homeschool time um because i feel like when we do labs it kind of throws off our flow throws off our day because there's things she has to do after science and uh, but but this but this kit i will make time for her to do um to play around with it on that second day because you know you don't have to gather all these materials and have water and you know so yeah so um so uh, I'm still considering it kind of like literature based chemistry, where this is like a very, very, very introduction to chemistry. Whereas if and when she would go to like, say, take a community um, college course, which is like a chemistry lab, which I would plan for her to do for high school. If she doesn't go to high school, um, like look at local. I know in Austin, they definitely have this where you can do like a community school, community class community college classes that are like labs or all different types of classes and they count as college credit and they count as like high school credit so that would be something I would be having her do in high school if she doesn't go to high school so that she would actually get the lab experience because I am terrible at teaching labs um, and doing labs and things like that so and then I'm thinking maybe for sixth and seventh grade we will do like a physics unit and then, like, uh, and then again, we'll uh, do biology. But biology has so many things involved in it that I think biology could be almost like a two-year. Maybe like seventh and eighth grade would be biology, and like sixth grade would be uh, physics. But I'm just thinking long term. But yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thanks so much, to everyone who subscribes, likes, take care.